Hello, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you, depending on whichever part of the world you are tuning in from. Well, I'm so excited, very grateful for life, and glad to be with you here this morning as we are going to be taking another fresh new look at the financial market. But before we kickstart the session, let's run through our daily routine by confirming that we are all on the same page. So if you can see my screen clearly and hear my voice loud and clear, please let me know in the comment section by typing in hi. So once you type in hi, I get to have a feedback that states that we are all good to go and then we can kickstart the session. So thank you very much guys as you do so. So I look forward to your feedbacks uh, while I load up my comment box. Thank you very much. So I think I see a handful of comment here in the comment section. <coughs> um, who, who's here? Um, okay, from Moin. Um, good morning to you, Moin. Satsolo, good morning to you. Um, Kark, good morning. Mude, good morning to you. Um, IE188 says, could you speak louder and clearer, please? Um, I think I'm doing that already. If you can hear me very well, I will suggest probably you um, restart your app. And is anyone out there says thinks that I'm not speaking as loud enough, please let me know. And if that is going to be the case, then I will just do some adjustments here. Okay. Uh, Messi03, good morning to you. 697 good morning to you roy 99 thank you very much glad to have you around hello carrie how are you doing today thank you very much um who else is here again yansen tong hatish 1989 tisha and okay <laughs> you're welcome ie188 i hope it's clear right now uh, Dida T says it's loud and clear. Thank you very much. So I think on this note, I want to take this as a positive confirmation that we are good to go this morning. And it's on this note, I welcome you all once again to yet another promising edition on the X Trend Speed Life. I do hope we all had a wonderful weekend out there. My own name is Sheriff. Dara Muller. And for the next one hour, I'm going to be your host as I will be taking you on a trading journey where we shall be delving into um, a handful of financial assets using simple and fundamental tools such as trend lines, key levels, and chart patterns to unravel the potential trajectory of price action for today. So buckle up, um, get your favorite beverage and popcorn, whatever you have, and let's stay tuned in so you don't miss out on any of the ideas we will be deliberating on today. And for those of you who are joining us for the first time, I didn't forget you at all. I'm always excited and glad to have newcomers in the house. Well, for those who are joining us for the first time, I know you will be wondering what this is all about. What is it that we really doing here well as technical traders we usually gather here on a daily basis in anticipation of the new york session so we come here to review our current positions if we have any and for the first trading day of the week like this this is a very beautiful opportunity for you to drop any financial assets you want us to look at for this week and trust me i will ensure that we include it in our watch list for this week and we shall be monitoring that asset throughout the course of the week so if you have any assets let me know 
in the comment section. So my aim here is to equip you with the knowledge and skills necessary for you to make your own independent trading decisions um, using simple and technical um, analysis to um, get strategically positioned ourselves for the next move. So once again, I welcome you all on board and encourage you to engage in the comment section. So with that being said, we will be diving right into the business. And as usual, the first asset we, sorry, um, the first thing we normally do is to keep tabs with the fundamental factors that will be affecting the market sentiments for today. And uh, based on the assets I have on my own watch list that I am going to be looking at, we shall be focusing on both the um, United States and the United Kingdom economic docket. Now, for this week and for today, um, eight, uh, Monday 8th of January, we really do not have any high impactful event to look out for. So what I will be doing now is to include the medium and low impactful event. Let's see if there is something that we can look out for that will affect the market sentiments today. And if we do that correctly, you will see what we have here. Uh, for Monday, January 8th, we have a, a speech coming up in about two to three hours from now. And this is going to be delivered by Raphael W. Bostick, who is an American economist and academic who became the president and CEO of the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta and is also a serving is also a voting member of the Federal Open Market Committee and of course you know um, in the absence of no high impactful event majority in the market will definitely want to be looking forward to what he will have to say as it whatever he says today will be giving us an insight into the uh, trajectory of the monetary policy of the Federal Reserve. And besides this, um, there are no other major impactful event that could um, significantly affect the market sentiment. So with that being said here, we will be diving right into the business. And one thing we do know as technical traders is that the anticipation of this speech, of course, will um, reflect on the chart as price action. So the first asset we will be looking at today, as usual, is going to be um, hold on a second. I usually take some time for it to load up. So let's take some time um, to wait for it to load. And if um, I, I'm yet to see any assets in the comment section. So if you have any assets you want us to look at, this is the most appropriate time for you to um, drop them in the comment section so that we can include it into our watch list. So the first asset on our watch list for today is going to be the US All Sports. And in fact, we're beginning to see some interesting situation going on in this market at this point in time. Well, last week we had tremendous trading opportunities. Remember, we did buy, we did sell as well at the same time, giving us um, significant amount of profit on this particular asset. However, as we dive into today's trading session, what is going to be our plans? Are we going to continue the uptrend situation here or are there chances that sellers could come in at any point in time? Well, if we look behind the scenes, you will see that um, since the new week started, the, uh, the price of oil has um, taken a downturn, retracing its recent gains and trading lower in fact is trading below the 72 dollar 50 cent level at this point in time now for me this 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 decline in oil prices can be attributed to a confluence of factors notably the strategic price cuts implemented by saudi arabia who happens to be a key player in the global oil market um, we heard about this news yesterday uh, pegging their oil, official pro, uh, oil price to um, this lowest point in the last 27 months. Then additionally, the OPEX Plus and its allies have witnessed a surge in output with a notable increase of 70,000 barrels per day in December, reaching a total of 27.88 million barrels according to 
um, reliable sources. And noteworthy contributors to this surge were Iraq and Angola, each contributing an impressive 60,000 barrels during the same period alongside an uptick in crude oil shipment from Nigeria. Now, this escalation in oil production stands in contrast to the ongoing efforts by the OPEX, OPEX Plus members to implement production cost cuts. Now, the intricate balance between this dynamic has intensified the downward pressure on oil prices. Now, another layer to the intricate dynamic of these assets is the escalating tensions in the Middle East and, of course, on the Red Sea as well, which uh, has a tendency of um, disrupting, disrupting the oil global oil supply. So with all of these informations, uh, we are at a crucial um, juncture in this market where it is very necessary for us to ensure that we have a well-informed technical understanding of this current market structure before making any investment decisions. Now, with that being said, let's scale up into the higher time frame and let's take a quick look at what things are looking like from an holistic perspective. Now, what I did on the daily time frame was to take into consideration the nature of price action in the last um, four to five months, that's since September, and it is quite obvious that price action has been very, very bearish. And if we take it a step further to connect the series of lower highs, I was able to identify a trend line which we will be using to guide our trading decisions for this week. Now you know how we use our descending trend lines in this community. As long as price remains below the descending trend line, we want to be looking out for patterns and structures that will support the idea of selling this particular asset. However, something interesting happened at the beginning of the month of December. Now, despite the strong bearish momentum in this market, we did notice that as soon as price tested the $69 area, we begin to see how sellers were finding it difficult to break through that zone. And this resulted in buying pressure around that area. And in fact, we saw what happened last week. In as much as sellers were trying to break through, we saw another um, rejection of that area to emphasize the strength of the bias. And in fact, it closed in a higher low, which is a sign that buyers are gradually gaining momentum behind the scenes. And if we connect the series of higher lows here, we should be having a temporary ascending trend line, which we will be using to guide our trading decisions for uh, this week or in the in the nearest future. So I would like to thicken this a little bit to emphasize its importance. So we'll go back to our candle chart. Now, after observing the multiple rejection of the $69 area, where sellers were finding it difficult to break through this area, I begin to notice that we might likely be seeing price transition into a reversal setup in the form of a double bottom structure. So if we take into consideration this impulsive move that brought us into this point, you will see price appear as you see this level was unable to break down the previous low. So we have price transitioning into what will look like a double bottom structure. Though this is not yet confirmed as we still need our neckline to be broken before we can consider this a solid reversal pattern. So we have our neckline of this reversal pattern just right within the $75.50 level and the $74 area where we will need price to break out of the structure to give us an opportunity to buy. And one interesting thing about this neckline area and the key level for the week at the $74 area is the fact that it shares a beautiful confluence with that descending trend line we spotted earlier. So if price breaks out of the key level, the neckline, and of course the descending trend line, then this will be a sign that the trend line may no longer have the capacity to continue to negate the bullish attempt. So we look out for buying opportunities at the breakout of the neckline and that descending trend line. So that is how we will be 
managing our positions for buying opportunities here and only sell if the demand zone is broken. Now that we we have a well-defined information on the daily time frame, let's scale down into the one hour time frame so that we can see how market participants have been reacting to this both the descending trend line and the key level at the $74 area. Now scaling down into the one hour time frame, we begin to see things more clearly. And in fact, we saw how the new week has started on a strong um, bearish note, as you will see here. Though we initially had price confined within a range. Let me show you what I saw here. Give me a moment, please. Uh, we'll mark this out. No, let's let's see. Okay. So the price started the week around the $73.75 level, which happens to be the highest point for price action for this week. And we saw our price dropped into the $72.65 level, where we saw some buy pressure resume around that area which later considered to be a retracement of that leg now with the situation we have here that is having a range where price was confined within the 73 dollars 75 cent level and the 72 dollars 65 cent area we have something to work with and you know how we do it in this community especially when we identify this kind of structure at the beginning of the week, we exercise patience and wait for either the breakout of the resistant line to give us an opportunity to buy or the breakdown of the support line to give us an opportunity to sell. And with this being said here, I did have a sell position right below the $72.65 level, which has already been triggered right now. And in fact, it is running with about... Um, how many pips now? About 50 to 50 pips move thereabouts. And at this juncture, if you are taking advantage of this opportunity, well done and kudos to you for supporting that opportunity. So as it is right now, we are going to exercise patience and wait to see how the market will play out in the next couple of hours. And for those of us who had missed out on this opportunity, let's see if the market will um, be kind enough to give us um, new opportunities to join the decline and what we will be looking out for for those who had missed out on the breakdown of the $72.65 level is to see if price will come back at some point to retest the structure and the inability of buyers to stay above this area will be welcoming a downtrend continuation. Now, it is not all the time the market comes back to retest structure, of course, and there are chance, there are situations where we see price transition into a bearish rectangle pattern, maybe a little bit of consolidation phase, maybe for about 5 to 10 or 15 hours before the breakdown retest of that structure happens to join the decline to the downside. So I would encourage us all to take this into consideration. Let's mark out these levels on our chart and let's use it as a guide to... Um, to manage our position on this particular asset. Now, in as much as we look out for selling opportunities, we cannot ignore the potentials that buyers too can also come in. And if I want to consider buying this asset, I want to see price take out the $73 area, break it out to the upside. And then if that is going to be the case, I will be joining, then had more position at the $73.75 level and the $74 area to maximize the potential of that bullish move so these are my views on the us all spot for today very simple setup let's mark out our levels on the chart and uh, use this as a reference point to guide our independent trading decisions for today if you have any questions feel free to let me know in the comment section as always i will be taking the next 10 to 15 seconds off to see if there are any questions whatsoever before we move on to the next asset on our watch list.
Okay, so I see a comment here from um, Jack X. Um, I'm not sure if the question pertains to the current position we are talking about, but if it does, let me just quickly um, give some uh, um, um, insight into this. So he said here, okay, in this position, can I buy or not? Okay, um, I want to assume probably you are new with us. So what we normally do on the chart is to identify structures and patterns that we want to be using to guide our trading decisions. And of course, this pattern gives us an insight into either uh, uh, the market is bullish or has a tendency of going bearish. Now, with the situation we have here, I did mention earlier that we have a range which we identified between the $73.75 level and the $72.65 area. And whenever we identify this range, we want to exercise patience and wait for either the breakout of the resistant line to give us an opportunity to buy, which is yet to happen. So there is no point considering buying as we need the breakout of the resistant line to buy. And the other instance is to wait for price to break down the support line, which has already been broken, triggering my own first sell position for the week and for those who took this advantage i did say um, well done to you now if you had missed out on the selling opportunity let's see if the market will do a retest of structure where the appearance of continued selling pressure on our lower time frame will give us an opportunity to join the decline to the downside so it's based on structures it depends on what the market does that will make us decide if we are going to be buying or selling jack x i do hope i made myself very clear so at this point in time we have a bearish buyers in mind as price action just broke down the 72 dollar 65 cent level now if price takes out the sell position and climbs above the 73 dollar area we shall be looking out for buying opportunities above the 73 and maximize that momentum as price goes on to break out the 73 dollar 75 cent and the 74 dollar area so i hope i made myself clear there um jack x um hello sergio good morning to you uh, Mukasa says, so can we buy to the retests? Muska, so can we buy to the retest? I'm not sure I understand what you mean by that. Um, the current position right now is bearish. So we sold below the $72.65 level. So we're looking out for um, more opportunities to sell this asset, not buy. We are only buying above the $73 dollar area So with that being said here and the absence of no further questions, I want to assume that we are all on the same page and in that regard we shall be moving on to the next assets on our watch list so the next asset on our watch list for today is the us tech 100 popularly known as the Nasdaq and last week was quite um, an interesting week we had the privilege of joining some selling opportunities and during the later part of last week we saw opportunities where buyers buy buying potential presented itself which we also took advantage of now as it is right now um, the market is a little bit choppy at the moment where things are going right now and one of the things behind the scene is um the price is looking more bearish due to the lowered rate cut expectations and general risk of sentiment due to heightened tensions in the middle east um and of course the expectation that the federal the fed reserve um, is in a dilemma of rate cut or rate hike based on the resilient U.S. economic data we witnessed during the course of last week. Now, from a technical standpoint, how do we intend to position ourselves for the next move? Well, to do this, we will start our analysis from the higher time frame. I think I did started um, from the four hours, okay, on the daily time frame. Yes, we did start on the daily time frame. And on the daily time frame here, you will see what I did. What I had to do was to take into consideration the nature of price action since the month of August of 
last year and while doing this i was able to identify a trend line which had played a major role in determining the direction of price action in the last four to five months and it's going to be playing a major role in deciding how we will plan our trading for today now if you look at the structure closely you will see how this trend lines had played a major role in determining the direction of price action in the last four to five months. Look at how this level, this trend line was a buying niche here in the month of August. We saw how when soon as price got into this area, we saw price climb to the upside. Then fast forward to the month of September, we saw price break down the structure after breaking down it retested it pushing price to the downside again see how the trend line guided buying opportunities and selling opportunities as well then fast forward to the month of november price broke above this ascending trend line and since then price action had remained above that ascending trend line to emphasize the strength of the buyers in this market and as it is right now in the last 8 to 12 hours now price action is back into that ascending trend line now the question as we prepare for the new week is will the trend line serve as a support line to continue the uptrend something like this or are we going to be seeing a situation where the trend line will be broken to the downside to insight a sell-off now to make things easier for us to capitalize on the next move we did identify our key level at the 16,175 area and look at how this level had played a major role in guiding in determining direction of price action in the last four to six weeks so we have selling niche here as you will see we also had another one right here before this level was broken during the mid-month of December. Now, is price going to retest the structure to insights and uptrend? Or are we going to be seeing a transition into a reversal setup that will break down the ascending trend line to insight a sell-off? Now, to position ourselves for the next move, we want to be scaling down into the one-hour time frame to see how market participants have been reacting to that area above the key level had a 16,175. Now, um, hold on a second. I think I have a structure on the four hours time frame which I deem it fit to share with you. Let me see. I think I do have, yes, I do have a structure exactly. So, this is the 16,175, very much intact. It's still very much intact here. So that's 16,175 and price is yet to break down that structure. And one thing I noticed at the end of last week trading session was the inability of um, sellers to break down that key level. Let me extend this key level out a little bit. Okay, so you saw what happened here on Friday. We saw the sharp rejection. And since the early hours of this week, price is yet to break down that structure. And if we consider the impulsive move that brought us into this point, we might be seeing a reversal setup unfold where the 16,400 will be serving as the neckline where the breakout retest will welcome more buying opportunities here. And the only condition that will make me want to sell the US Tech 100 is for price to break down, retest the key level at the 16,175 to join a sell off. Now, as it is right now, let's see if this ascending trend now will be broken, will be respected, leading into the breakout of the neckline at the 16,400. So I will scale down into the one hour time frame so that we can see how market participants have been reacting to this structure since the beginning of this week. So at this juncture, hold on a second, let me push this up a little bit. 16,400, right? Okay, so
I'm trying to make sure that these lines are within the auspices of our screen. So this morning, while trying to dissect the current market structure, I could see here that since the week began, price does started with a bullish momentum, but it got trapped and confined within the 16,342 and the 16,275 area to emphasize the level of indecision going on here. And whenever we have a range like this, you know how we do it. We exercise patience and wait for either the breakdown retest of the support line to give us an opportunity to sell or the breakout of the resistant line to give us an opportunity to buy. Now, as it is right now, the last um, three hours has seen price break down the support line. In fact, has come back to retest to incite a selling opportunity here. So we just hope that price action will continue that momentum to the downside. And if it continues like this, I want to be adding more position only if price action breaks down our key level at the 16,175. But mind you, while we sell, please take note that as soon as price gets into the ski level, let's ensure that all stop losses are moved accordingly. Secure your positions while we wait and see how the market would react to that key level. If buy pressure resumes around the key level, this could lead to buying opportunities. And if price action breaks down the key level, this could lead to selling opportunities. So let's keep this in mind while we continue to monitor price action. So that is the buying opportunity here. Now to, sorry, that's the selling opportunity here. Now um, to buy the US Tech 100, I would rather want to see price take out the highest points for this week. That is the 16,342. So see a breakout retest of that structure before considering buying from that area and then adding more positions at the breakout of the 16,400. So you can see how crucial this zone is and depending on the direction of the breakout here is going to be dictating the pace at least for the days ahead. If you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to let me know in the comment section. So I will be taking the next 10 to 15 seconds off to see if there are any questions before we move on to the next asset on our watch list. All right, so in the absence of no questions, I want to assume that we are all on the same page. And in that regard, we shall be moving on to the next asset on our watch list. So the next asset on our watch list is the cable markets, popularly known as the GBP USD. So on the GBP USD, um, at this juncture, you see what happened on Friday. We saw this engulfing bullish candle right here on Friday. And at this point, I want to consider the selling pressure that started this um, this morning appearing to be 
a sign that the pound sterling may be eating the brakes on its recent three-day winning streak entering a consolidation phase during the Asian session between the 1.273 and the 1.2700 area to emphasize the level of uncertainty at this particular point in time. At this juncture, the pound sterling stands at a critical point, um, tethering on the edge of a uh, potential breakdown retest of that psychological support level at the 1.27 area, which appears to have already been broken. And if price remains below that structure, we could be seeing um, selling pressure fueled by a pessimistic economic outlook and a breach below this key support zone could exert downward pressure on the pound sterling. Now, to navigate this pivotal moment, market participants will keenly watch for insights from the upcoming British Retail Consortium, that is BRC, like for like retail data. Uh, we have it coming up tomorrow here on the on the United Kingdom economic calendar. And we also have the manufacturing production data due on Friday too as well. And this will these releases are expected to provide fresh impetus and clarity on the United Kingdom economic landscape. So in light of this um, development, uh, we will be looking at structures that we will be that will be guiding our positions for this week. And to do this, let's scale up into the daily time frame and let's look at what things are looking like from an holistic perspective. Now, on the daily time frame, I took into consideration trading activities since the month of October. And it's quite clear that price was bullish in the last um, four to five months, giving us this the ascending trend line you can see on your screen right now in fact i have a couple of them but this one highlighted in red is the major one right now since this is where price is close to now in addition to this trend line i did identify my key level for this week at that psychological zone at 1.272 and in fact you can see how this level or let's say the zone between the 1.272 and the 1.28250 area has been a strong selling niche in this market in the last five months. And as a result of this, I did identify this area as a supply zone. And if you look at since the mid month of December, I think since the first day of December, we saw how buyers have been struggling to break through that area, though there was an attempt which was a little bit successful here, but uh, we saw sellers still continue to maintain their ground around that area. The same thing happened here, and last week price closed around that level. And in fact, we are right back into that particular area, making it a further um, crucial area to look out for trading opportunities. So as we head into the new week, um, what are we going to be doing here? The question at this juncture is, will the ascending trend line here continue to maintain the bullish bias? That is, if price remains above both the ascending trend line and the key level, we definitely want to be looking out for patterns and structures that support the idea of selling. But if price breaks down the ascending trend line, we might start considering selling maybe into this other trend line here to incite a bullish momentum or in fact break it down to the downside to um, incite a sell-off. Now, in order to guide our position, we have a simple trading setup on the four hours time frame, which I would love to share with you. So on the four hours time frame, it's an ascending trend line duly marked out here. Price remains above the ascending trend line and we look out for opportunities to buy this asset. Now, Let's zoom right into the current structure. And since the second half of last week, you will see how price action has been confined within the 1.272 and the 1.26150 area. But one interesting thing about this structure here is the fact that price still remains above this ascending trend line, opening up the idea or maintaining the idea 
the buyers still have a say in this market. And if we are going to consider selling the JP USD, I would rather see a breakdown of both the ascending trend line and the 1.2615 to join a bearish move. Now, with this information we have gathered here, let's see how the market has been reacting to the 1.272 since the beginning of this week. Now, scaling down into the one hour time frame, we begin to see things very, very clearly. So, right here on the one hour time frame, let's see what is going on. Okay. So on the one hour time frame, we saw how at the beginning of the week, though the week started on a bearish note, but our price remained oscillating around that key level to further emphasize um, the importance of that um, this zone. So as, at, as it is right now, we have a range to guide our trading decisions as price was confined within the 1.273 and the 1.27 area for the first um, seven to eight hours of the week before we saw the breakdown of the structure. So I had a breakdown move as soon as price moved about how many pips was that? About 25 pips I moved my stop loss to break even. So at this point I got taken out from this um, sell position. Now um, how do we intend to position ourselves for the next move? Well if you look at this structure considering the impulsive move that started on Friday of last week trading session, we could be seeing this bearish momentum we see here could be a retracement of that impulsive leg where is, instead what we want to be looking out for is where it is likely for this retracement phase to end to incite an uptrend continuation. Now, if we bring out our Fibonacci retracement to run it through the previous impulse leg, we should be having an area between 50 and 78.6%, which appears to have been tested at this point in time. So since price has tested this area and we continue to see buy pressure around this area, we might likely be seeing an uptrend continuation pattern. Now, in addition to that one is this descending trend line here after capturing the lower high since last week, Friday, uh, price breaking out and retesting this trend line will further emphasize the strength of the bias. But for me to feel very comfortable here, I would rather want to see price break out the 1.23, that's the highest point price action has been for this week to get me ready for another wave of bullish momentum but before the breakout happens we could see opportunities of joining that bullish momentum if we can see um, significant structures like higher highs and higher lows then we can actually be part of that uptrend move so i encourage us all to mark out this level however in as much as things are looking bullish we cannot ignore the potentials of sellers and as it is right now, we already have a breakdown of the support line and prices back into the structure. So I would advise you have a sell stop order below the 1.2700 level to capitalize on the bearish momentum. So let's keep this in mind. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comment section. So I will take the next 10 to 15 seconds, see if there are any questions before we move on to the next assets on our watch list. Hello, Panayo621. Good morning to you. Glad to have you around with us. All right. So in the absence of no questions, tacking this as a confirmation that we are good to go. And in that regard, we move on to the 
next and final assets on our watch list. The final asset on our watch list for today is my favorite, and that is the XAU USD, popularly known as the Gold Spot. And I hope we are ready to be part of this as we will be taking um, a precise dissection of this structure. Now, the week kicked off on a bearish note as we saw price. Um, we saw uh, we saw how the bullish momentum that ended last year appears to be showing signs of exhaustion now the lingering uncertainty around the federal reserve's rate cut trajectory has held market participants back from making bold direction move and as a result of this those who had bought the xau us the last year appear to be taking and um, doing some profit taking activities which has resulted in this bearish situation that started this week now, as expectations for an aggressive policy easing by the Fed diminish, market participants seem to be adjusting their positions in light of a resilient U.S. economy and hawkish remarks from key FOMC members. Now, this adjustment has led to sustained higher U.S. Treasury bond yields, providing a tailwind for the U.S. dollar while exerting downward pressure on gold prices, especially on today and of course we know how the u.s treasury bond yields is directly proportional to the u.s dollar if the u.s treasury bond yield rises definitely dollar will follow suit and if it drops the dollar also will follow suit now with a stronger u.s treasury bond yield at this point we might be seeing this serving as a limiting factor to the upside of the xau USD. Now, before we go into the details here on the one hour time frame, I would like to share with you some of the things I saw on the daily time frame. And looking at what we have on the daily time frame, what I did here was to consider the nature of price action in the last four to five months. And in fact, we have something that looks like an ascending channel to work with for this week. So we have the support line here after connecting the series of higher lows and we have the resistant line of the ascending channel here after connecting the series of higher highs now with an ascending channel in place we definitely want to be looking out for buying opportunities but it's not all the time that this works this way it's called inside some selling pressure look at what happened around the 2080 look at selling pressure here we saw what happened here again during the later part of last week as we saw our buyers were finding it difficult to break out of the 2080 and if this persists we might likely be seeing um, a breakdown of the of the support line of this ascending channel to incite a sell-off uh, this week so to guide our trading decisions for this week we have our key level situated at its psychological area around the 2000 and 35 level so depending on what happens on this level would determine what our next line of action will be but one thing for sure is if price trades below the 2035 we will be back within the seller's territory look at what happened here it has a memory for selling power we saw what happened here we saw what happened here though price eats a new high there and right now price is back into that particular structure making it an an area that we will be placing our focus on for today now on the four hours time frame we have okay it's almost the same we have a trend line here very much intact so let's scale down into the one hour time frame to see how market participants had reacted to that key level since the beginning of this week now right here on the one hour time frame after looking at the structure um in detail you will see that price has been oscillating around the key level at the 2035 hereby resulting into a situation 
where price is confined within the $2,046.50 level and the $2,027 area. Now you know how we do it whenever we have a beautiful flag channel like this, which emphasizes the uncertainty in the market. We want to exercise patience and wait for either the breakout of the resistance line to give us an opportunity to buy or the breakdown of the support line to give us an opportunity to sell. Now, in addition to that range is this ascending trend line. Remember, we identified this on the higher time frame, and it appears in the last two to three hours, price action has just broken down of that ascending trend line. Will this continue breaking down in 2027? Well, let's see how this will play out. So for me, I had a sell stop order below the 2027, which has already been triggered right now. So let's see how this is going to play out from here. So anywhere below the key level at the 2035 makes quite a lot of sense to sell. But I would like to see something like this breakdown. If it happens, we are I'm, I'm already in the trade. Uh, but price could still come back to retest either the trend line or the key level to incite a continue trend to the downside. So as a result of this, you want to have your stop losses way above the key level so that we can give enough breathing space for price action to move around. So the stop loss on this initial sell position is quite wide. That's between 80 to 90 pips stop loss on this one. Let's see how this is going to play out. So this is what I look out for to sell the XAUUSD. However, in as much as we're looking out for selling opportunities, we cannot ignore the potentials that buyers could still take over this market. And we all know how this uh, market has been bullish in the last couple of months now. And for me to consider buying this asset, I will need price to climb back above the key level had the $2,035 area. Of course, you know how we use our key level. When price climbs above the key level, we look out for patterns and structures that supports the idea of buying an asset. So if I can see a breakout retest of the structure, I will be in for a buy position. And if price continues to climb new highs, breaking out of the $2,046.50 level and the $2,050 area, we will be adding more sell small buy positions to our existing trade. So a simple setup we have here below the key level welcomes selling opportunities and above the key level are welcomes buying opportunities. So let's be on standby to capitalize on any of the opportunities that the market presents to us today. So um, I think we have done justice to all the assets on my watch list for today. Um, if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. I will take the next 10 seconds off to see if there are any questions before we move on and round off today's um, exclusive session on the extreme speed. Alright, alright. So in the absence of no questions, I want to assume that we are all on the same page. And in that regard, we shall be rounding off on today's trading session on the Extra and Speed Live. And um, we were able to attend to four major financial assets today, uh, which includes the US All Sports, the US Tech 100. The GBP USD and finally the XAU USD, where we were able to identify simple trading setups using simple and fundamental tools such as trend lines, key levels, and chart patterns to unravel the potential trajectory of price action today. Um, I do hope we all marked out these levels on our chart, very, very important, as we will need them as a reference point to guide our trading decisions for today. 
And for those of you who are joining us for the first time, I do hope you gain one or two things from what we discussed here today. And if you did, you want to be part of our subsequent editions. Trust me, the more time you spend with us in this community, the better you get to understand our analytical approach and eventually be able to use the information gathered here to make your own independent trading decisions. Um, um, I see your comment, Leonardo Divi. Glad to have you around. I never knew you were around. Trust you are doing very well. So um, another thing I usually mention is that um, we should realize that um, every decision we make in the financial market is more or less an educated guess. And in that, in that regard, it's important that we have a well-defined risk management strategy in place to protect and mitigate against um, too much risk on our portfolio. So please adopt a well-defined risk management strategy and um, we shall continue to monitor price action from here. So on this note, I want to wish us all the best of luck today and look forward to seeing you same time tomorrow, 10 a.m. UTC. 11 a.m. West African time as we come here again to review how well these assets have been doing and at the same time prepare ourselves for tomorrow's trading session. Trade smart, trade consciously and do have a wonderful evening everyone. Bye. -bye.